Minh Thúy xin kính chào quý vị hôm nay thứ Sáu, 14 tháng 6, 2024. Đến với VATV hôm nay gồm có phỏng vấn đặc biệt và nhạc lá bồ đề. Kính thưa quý vị, năm 1962 thì ông Frank Scotton vừa được gửi sang Việt Nam khi các cơ quan của Hoa Kỳ chưa thật sự thành hình. Nguồn máy hoạt động của Mỹ đã bắt đầu hoạt động mạnh nhưng chưa thật sự ăn khớp với nhau. Các cơ quan quân sự, dân sự thường có những tiêu chuẩn làm việc khác nhau. Khi phối hợp hành động, những tiêu chuẩn làm việc có đôi khi xung khắc. Một trong những xung khắc điển hình là cách viết báo cáo của các cơ quan dân sự và quân sự. Ngoài những xung khắc khó tránh đó, các cơ quan Mỹ còn phải cộng tác với các cơ quan Việt Nam. Khi công tác ở Việt Nam, trong thời điểm này thì ông Frank Scotton đã kể lại một cuộc chạm trán căng thẳng giữa thiếu tá Kelly, người bạn của ông, và tướng Thames. Ông cũng kể lại cách hoạt động của các cơ quan như nhóm cố vấn hỗ trợ quân sự, bộ viện trợ quân sự của cơ quan thông tin Hoa Kỳ. Các bản báo cáo khác nhau của các cơ quan Hoa Kỳ đã gây ra những khó khăn gì? Phải làm thế nào để tổng hợp các bản báo cáo đó để được cái nhìn tổng quát nhất và đúng nhất? Trong phần 3 phỏng vấn lần này thì Minh Thúy mời quý vị tiếp tục theo dõi tình hình Việt Nam năm 1962 qua các công tác của ông Frank Scotton do Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy thực hiện. Are you talking including the military or, or uh, just uh, on well, the that, civilian that side? A, that was a different situation. Um, the, here and there, when I travel, for instance, I would find an advisor, a province advisor, who really seemed to care about learning the, the happenstance of that particular province and, uh, and what, was, what was going on. But uh, most of Most of the military, I think, were, were following kind of pro forma um, approaches to what it was they had to do. And I know that there were, there were requirements. Um, I didn't have a specific reporting requirement. I, I was told by uh, Bumgardner to, to re report what I thought was important. Uh, but the, the military had, uh, had reporting requirements. And I know at one point when General Timmies, who was at that time, MACV and MAG were distinct. Um, later, after General Timmies left, uh, MACV absorbed MAG. But when General Timmies was head of MAG, he came up to Quang Ai and uh, at a lunch with the uh, Quang Ai province advisor, Uh, Major Bob Kelly, who later worked with me on the, uh, in, in developing the, uh, the, the locally based anti-communist units that, that Frank Snepp mentioned. Uh, Kelly was a, a, a good guy and, and a kind of an irregular sort of army major. So, so uh, uh, General Timmy said to him at lunch, uh, I was about three chairs away. He said, uh, Kelly, they tell me that you're ash canning some of our report requests. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, and the night before, Kelly had complained to me, he said, God damn it, they keep asking for this, asking for that, you know. They, they want me to uh, count sandwich wrappers or something. So um, Kelly said, uh, yeah, I could, I could see him kind of drawing himself up, offended, and then he said, well, no, sir, but It seems sometimes that the way the report requests are phrased, it's almost like they're presupposing I'm going to give a certain answer. Uh, and then <laughs> the general said to General Timmy, said, Kelly, you're full of shit. <laughs> well, Kelly was a World War II veteran of the Pacific Islands, and so he, you know, I could see him kind of drawing himself up like, nobody told me that. <laughs> But then he realized, General, Major, and he said, He subsided him and he said, yes, sir. <laughs> so the, there, was, there was that kind of uh, tension and it was rare for me to find uh, someone like uh, Ma Major Kelly who, who would uh, consciously 
look deeper than what the reports indicated was expected of him. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's why I think Kelly was, it, it was such, a, was such a, uh, a keystone to what it was that we did subsequently. And, from what I, from what you're telling me, it seems like you, uh, uh, the American, I would say, have different org uh, organization that's going into different direction that not necessarily coordinate with one another in their report and their outlook. And like the military is going one way, and you are going USIA in another way, and then possibly other organization like the CIA is going still in another different direction, and gathering your own information. From the government, you're telling me it's very pro forma, and in your case, it's very informal. I don't know what the CIA is doing, but how, how, well, how, how are all this uh, I, I connected? Think that, I think that each of the different organizations had their organizational bias towards information collection. Um, and, you know, that may, have been, that may have been the case with some elements of USIA, too. I know for at, th at that time, I think USIA had begun doing a weekly film newscast for on behalf of the Ministry of Information, and uh, the Ministry of Information of the Vietnamese of the, people. Of the Vietnamese or, uh, government. I think that they were they were helping them, or, or not yet doing it for them, but helping them. Uh, and the embassy political section had its kind of. Uh, requirements uh, as a formula for, for example, the, uh, the consul in Hue to be responsive of in the political section, the young officers that would go out and make a report and come back. Um, and uh, the, the Central Intelligence Agency had specific elements of uh, tasking that they would place upon officers who would, who would go to the field. At that time, there, were, there was not much of a field presence, but they had officers, uh, for instance, who would go down to Kienwa, uh, spend two or three days there, observe what uh, Trang Lop Chow was doing, mm -hmm. and make a report. Um, the, the difference in my case, which allowed me, I think, to pursue a, 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 a different kind of education within Vietnam, is that uh, Ev Bum Gardner, did not place uh, re requirements upon me. You know, it, it, it was a, a extraordinarily broad charter. You know, go to central Vietnam, Quang Hai, Bin Din, Phu Yen, and if you must, you know, up to Kantum and Pleiku, but the, the populated area of those three provinces, you know. What was find, it that you tried to what's find happening. out? What's, right. what, what's, what, what's important? Uh, mm -hmm. How do you, what criteria are you looking for when you're saying looking for something that you think is important, but what are the criteria that you're using to judge uh, whether one event or one person is more important than other, and how, how do you go about that? Well, in the beginning, for example, I, I spent about uh, almost a month with uh, the fourth psychological operations company that was a, actually a special operations company commanded by Nguyen Thuy with a Jirai, uh, 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 Captain Yu Xu as his deputy, and they were operating within the An Lao Valley. Uh, and uh, my landlord in Quinyon uh, had told me that, that that was a critical area in Binh Dinh province. So I went up and, and spent almost a month with them, and, uh, and I learned. You know, I learned about the history of that area and the, and the presence of the, of the, uh, the uh, residual presence of the communists. And uh, just to tell you one story, what, they were firing illumination rounds from uh, uh, mortars uh, to indicate uh, the, the location. And then with uh, loudspeakers and having gone up into the foothills, uh, Captain Twee's men invited anyone who wanted to leave um, the the communist side to, you know, come towards the light, mm -hmm. come in. So actually, uh, within a period of about is it like three, rallying uh, effort? Rallying effort? Yeah. Well, uh, he didn't call it that, but he, but three people who had been in the in communist base area mm -hmm. came down. They were tired and 
they didn't really want to do it anymore. They were, they, was it effective, it was, it, what they're doing? Hmm? Was it very effective? Well, they were being trained, uh, but they, they left. Uh, so as I was speaking with them, and at that point my Vietnamese was so cranky that I, I needed help from an interpreter, but as I spoke with them, um, and, I, and I asked them at one point, kind of just out of curiosity, how long had that base area been in a place called Con Truck? You may recall from my email address. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the answer was 1945. And I remember kind of not staggering backwards, but kind of leaning backward and thinking, 1945, when yes. I was seven years old? It was a communist area there, uh, and this is 1963. So how long ago was it that they already had a training area there? And uh, it was it, within the first several months that I was spending time in, in that area, that part of Vietnam, it, there were moments like that that made me realize this is really, really difficult, you know. it's. It's 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 not a it's not a simple matter of uh, communism being foisted upon people in Hungary, you know this this, like it or not, they have they have placed roots here. The roots are transplanted maybe uh, from the common turn via Ho Chi Minh, mm -hmm. but they they've got roots in this place. Mm. So that uh, that was uh, you know a, a real kind of Eye-opening experience. Yeah, an eye-opening experience, and it, it, I think in some ways it colored everything I did thereafter. So, so I was doing that, and then, that, and then uh, you know, they were talking about trails, so I, with the, with the advice, uh, helpful advice of uh, Captain Twee, um, who remained a good friend over the years, um, I, I walked a few of those trails uh, probably no more than six or seven. Mời quý vị đón xem phần 4 phỏng vấn ông Frank Scotton, nhân viên cao cấp Sở Ngoại vụ Hoa Kỳ, sẽ được phát hình vào tối thứ Sáu, ngày 21 tháng 6, 2024.